Good morning, you guys. This is a long overdue. Sorry I've waited so long. A few weeks ago, I posted on my Instagram and YouTube, I'm gonna be doing a prep Q&A. Finally, we'll be answering these questions and I wanted to make sure that prep was over and done with before I answered these. So, I'm drinking my pre-workout while I answer these questions. Hopefully, I'm gonna keep it a little shorter. I always say that and then it ends up being 30 minutes or so. So let's get going. So first question, do you prefer this prep or last year's prep and why? Definitely prefer this prep more. Started out a little rocky. I did a YouTube series for my whole prep. Did videos weekly, so check them out if you haven't. Um, so it started out a little rocky. My body didn't respond as I wanted it to initially to the cut and the cardio. So it took me a few weeks. I feel like I did get set back. Um, so I ended up bringing a coach on at about 10 weeks out, I think, nine or 10 weeks out. Since then, progress was consistent. Um, he helped basically take the weight off of my shoulders in terms of my macros and cardio. And it was so nice to not have to think about it and worry about it and focus on my own work and my own clients and not having to adjust my macros. Um, with that said, he is a flexible dieting coach and he sent me my macros. We did a carb cycling approach. Cardio was kept minimal, even up to the show. Did not water deplete. Had water on show day. Didn't have any crazy dietary restrictions. He didn't um, ask me to take any diuretics. So definitely prefer this prep to the last one. It was a lot more enjoyable. I feel like my energy was a lot better. And learning what I did for my last show and my last prep, I was able to take it into this one as well. So I think that each prep is just gonna get better and better, so I will probably continue to like the most recent prep more and more. I will also be doing a video on this contest prep uh, that I just got done with soon, so keep an eye out for that. How long was last year's prep and how long was this year's prep? Last year's prep I took 20 weeks up until the show, and this year's prep I started out in April, so I wanna say it was probably, <laughs> with the exception of being thrown off by a few weeks in the beginning. It's probably a good 20 to 24 week prep and it's very, very slow cutting. So um, slowly cutting out calories and you know, my prep is different than a lot of other people's. I don't put myself on a meal plan diet, uh, but I do cut my calories and slowly increase my cardio. So that is the prep process, it's cutting. Did you use flexible dieting for your last prep too? Yes, I did. What's your workout split and do you train different in your off season? I don't necessarily train differently in my off season. Workout split typically is uh, Monday is my high rep leg day. Tuesday I'll do heavy upper body, also my high carb day. Wednesday is arms. Thursday is heavy leg day. Friday is high rep chest and back. Saturday shoulders and then I also throw in deadlifts, bench squats and now I'm adding in some, some um, barbell pressing throughout the week as well so I'll either start or end a workout with that and then I toss in cardio and abs in there as well. So very high volume but it, I have been working up to that over the course of several years. What changes have you made this prep versus last year? In regards I've still done flexible dieting so no changes in my approach to nutrition. Um, last year's prep, I was doing a lot more cardio than this year. Um, if you guys watched my previous contest prep video, I was doing two a day cardio, probably for the last six weeks or so, uh, leading up until the show. This year, uh, I got up to three days of cardio, two hit sessions, and one uh, moderate intensity cardio session leading up to the show. So. Um, cardio was definitely the biggest difference, and then the actual um, peak week was slightly different in how we approach macros, how we approach water, and then show day, my uh, food intake was completely different. And you guys can check out my contest or my uh, competition day videos, and I go over what I eat uh, throughout the day: uh, pancakes and peanut butter. That's all I'm saying. Seriously, what about days when you just binge or really want to eat crap all day? We all have those days. We all have days when we crave something, 
um, whether, you know, ladies, it can be the time of the month. We all crave certain things during that time of the month. Um, there are days when I wake up and I'm just hungry as hell and I feel like I can't eat enough. It, it's hard for me to put my finger on what exactly helps the most for me. I think it's just been years of focusing on consistency over perfection. It's come through flexible dieting, tracking my intake, and allowing myself to have all foods throughout the week. Um, whenever I first started flexible dieting, I probably ate ice cream, cereal, or some type of Oreo or cookie every day. And I mean, not all three each day, but something every day. And I fit it into my intake because I was craving them so much because I had spent so long avoiding, avoiding them, thinking that they're bad foods, that's all I wanted. So I would account for one serving of ice cream or one serving of cereal into my day. Um, and then eventually over time, I stopped craving them as much. I still, you know, crave sweets pretty often, um, but I've found ways to incorporate sweet foods into my diet, but they're still healthier and, and less processed. So I'll do, you know, sweet potatoes with some peanut butter or um, more fruit, or I'll sweeten up some veggies in a different way and uh, do my zucchini oats. Um, so I still get that sweet in there, but I crave that food less because it's not restricted in my mind. That's come from, like I said, years. And on days whenever I do have something and you know it's, it fits into my diet and I'm having trouble moving on, usually I'll tell myself, if I really want it, you can have it again tomorrow. And that's helped me tremendously whenever I want to uh, binge on something, when I want to eat everything <laughs> or whenever I want to eat something you know that's not necessarily the best for you I'll remind myself if you really really want it plan to have it tomorrow it's gonna be that much better just wait you're gonna be okay you will survive you're not gonna starve so I kind of have to talk myself down and I go through this little process and a lot of that just comes from working through those issues that you have with food and finding out how to make peace with your body and make peace with food and whenever you do that it becomes a lot easier to focus on your body and your feelings rather than eating out of emotion. Are abs really the last muscles to show themselves? Mine are taking forever. It just depends on your body. Um, everybody is different. We all have areas in our body that you probably know right away. You gain fat there first and you lose it there absolutely last. I used to think that my stomach and my abs were my problem area until I got lean enough and found out that it's my legs and my thighs. <laughs> so those are the areas, everything else, and you can see on stage even, everything else is leaner and my legs, um, specifically my quads and my thigh area are not as lean as somewhere else like my upper body or my back. Um, and that just comes with consistency. And, and it could come down to not having enough muscle there as well. So you, you might be, you know, you might have a thin frame, you might um, have a low body fat percentage, but you're just not seeing it. You might not have enough muscle. So I would encourage you to um, also take into account that you can't tone muscle that's not there. You can't build muscle without food and lifting weights. So always make sure that you're eating enough, lifting weights, strength training, and taking care of your body. Um, you know, if, if you do want to work your abs just, just to get some extra work in there, maybe do some ab workouts three times a week. Um, but again, cannot emphasize enough strength training and eating enough. Do you carb cycle the whole prep? So this was the first prep that I actually carb cycled on. Um, I've always done refeed days, and that's one, uh, usually a higher carb day, but uh, this prep, whenever I started with my coach, we started incorporating two higher carb days and five lower carb days. I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would, and you know, I've done it with clients before, um, but as far as myself goes, I've always thought that I was one that enjoyed having a steady intake all week. I like having 
two higher carb days because it's like two little uh, two little refeed days throughout the week that you get to look forward to. So I did carb cycling for the last 10 weeks or so, ever since I started with my coach. This is a vegan question. So will you still be competing in figure competitions? Um, actually, I'm decided that I will no longer be competing in figure competitions. This is a new decision. Uh, after the show, I decided I don't, I don't want to do it anymore. I want to do physique. <laughs> Still gonna compete, you guys. Um, but I do want to do just physique. Figure is fun, and I did well in this last figure show. I know I did, but. Physique was so much more fun for me, and I didn't have to worry about the heels, and the posing is way more fun, and I would rather just spend my money, focus all that I have on physique. Um, I don't know, we'll see when it comes down to it, but yes, I will still be competing. I am going to continue my vegan lifestyle. The last two weeks, I think, of my prep, including show day, you know, ever since I put out that video, I have continued my vegan lifestyle. Um, I'm not even eating my whey protein anymore. Matt's finishing that off. And that's just my personal preference. Um, you know, of course, we're not perfect, so if you guys ever see me uh, do a grocery haul or something that includes animal products, call me out on it. Let me know. It's because I genuinely do not know. Um, will vegan prep work? So it's going to be exactly the same. I'm still going to track my macros. The only thing that changes is my food choices. So, um, you know, with, with my macros, I can hit them however I choose. So however I want to hit my protein, carbs, fats, um, focusing on whole foods, that's how I'm going to hit them. And uh, so it's not going to change anything about prep. As long as I'm hitting my macronutrients, getting my workouts done, everything should be exactly the same. Your high carb days on leg days or training days in general? My high carb days are on my heavier workout days. And that's just something that my coach recommended, so I do exactly what he tells me to. Um, I do recommend to clients as well to do a high carb day either the day before or the day of your toughest workout of the week. So if it's your leg day, have your high carb day either the day before or the day of. Just make sure you've got a good amount of carbs in your system to help. Um, I feel like it can give you just that little extra oomph for that tough workout. So. I have them on my heaviest days um, just as some extra fuel for the heavy weight. Uh, how many times do you lift? How many times is infinity? <laughs> how did your workout frequency change during prep? Uh, like I said, it didn't change. Follow the same schedule. Um, roughly the same. I'll, I'll switch out workouts uh, or exercises now and again. And I lift six days a week. How do you deal with soreness? Is it usually increased when lowering your caloric intake, or do you supplement specific amino acids to prevent that? Do you take BCAAs, branched chain amino acids? I have been taking them probably for a year and a half or so. I like the taste. Cyvation Extend is my favorite brand. It's something that there are studies that show that they work. There are studies that show that they don't work. <laughs> I don't feel that they're completely necessary, so if you don't have the finances for them, don't buy them. Um, just make sure you're getting in a good amount of whole foods, lots of fruits and veggies and vitamins through your diet, uh, supplementing with a multivitamin if you need to, drinking plenty of water and getting plenty of sleep. Recovery will take care of itself in that way. Um, if you feel that you're not recovering, I would recommend some extra rest days, focus on sleep more. I deal with soreness is make sure I get enough sleep. I do drink BCAAs during my workout, sometimes throughout the day if I want some extra flavor. Um, I drink tons and tons of water and I try and stretch, especially when I'm sore. Any areas that are specifically tight, like my hip flexors get real tight and my shoulders get real tight, so I'll make sure and massage those out if I'm feeling anything. Um, but I try and I get it. I try to get at least seven hours of sleep at night. Sometimes if I'm super sore, I will take a bath in Epsom salt. And I don't know if it necessarily helps, but if anything, it's a placebo effect, so I'm okay with that. And that, you know, I do have lots of workouts. Like yesterday's leg day, I was super sore throughout the whole thing, so I make sure and warm up well 
um, make sure nothing is too tight before I get started and then just work through it there you know there's really not much else you can do um, unless you want to take a few extra days to recover but that's at your discretion knowing your body and knowing what uh, your body is trying to tell you other than that just kind of pushing through the soreness and I have found that as the workout goes on the soreness does get better as you keep moving and so that's kind of how I deal with that that's all the questions that I'm answering today I hope you guys enjoyed this if you have any other questions leave them below I would be happy to answer them I will be doing a video on this last contest prep very soon keep an eye out for that please hit that thumbs up subscribe to the channel share it with a friend and as always thank you guys for tuning in thank you for helping this channel grow let's keep it going and I will see y'all in the next video bye